Hello everyone and welcome to another Mods World video. I'm your host Maxwell. Today I'm going to be going over my top mods of the month for Skyrim on Xbox. I won't be covering re-uploads but I will mention a few at the end of the video. I'm also not going to be covering textures, weather or lighting mods. That being said, if you like how my game looks, just ask what blah 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 are you using. I'll do my best to get you an answer. Enough waffle though, let's get into the video. First up is a mod called Tiered Class Accessories. This mod contains six class items in the form of three rings and three amulets, one for each of the classes, which are Mage, Thief and Warrior. Each of these items can be crafted under the jewellery section at the Forge from Tier 1 all the way up to Tier 6. The higher the number, the stronger the boost, but also the more difficult the item will be to create, which you know, makes a lot of sense. The kind of bonuses on display will depend on what faction you use. The mages obviously spec into magical things, but what's cool is how it actually bothers to incorporate things like alchemy into the wizard's arsenal by increasing stuff like harvest count. I say this specific example because it is one that you simply wouldn't know of if you hadn't read the mod page. Essentially, some of the bonuses just won't be displayed on the item description and the higher the tier, the more being done, so the more being left off the bio. There's also a set called the All Class. These are also tiered up to 6 and include all of the bonuses from all of the items. It is pretty much crazy strong, but then you won't have it until late game without cheating, so have at it, do what you want. Often in the base game, I've found the strength of the character takes weird spikes and plateaus, so it's nice to have another way to try and force yourself to the next level, especially with so many people playing extremely difficult builds. Well, from what I see anyway. I slotted tiered class accessories in with my pure craftable items, and it's been running pretty great from there. Seeing as this mod is only 59.7 kilobytes, I think most people will have some space for this one. One final note is keep an eye on this space as the author wishes to create new weapons and armors that also have this kind of tier system. So I shall be looking forward to that mod's release because I think it could be incredibly fun to play. Here is the trigger warning. I'm about to pronounce something so far wrong, so get to your keyboards and prepare the corrections because the next mod is Eomanganda Rising. This mod is attempting to do something I'm not sure I've seen before by creating a whole quest around the shout system. Generally speaking, I use shouts as a utility, like if I'm trying to cover ground fast, well when sprint. If I need to get to the bottom of a mountain, I'm gonna go ethereal. In videos, I'm forcing myself to shout in combat, and it is better than I thought. But even still, without the boost from something like Vokri, shouts are kinda empty. So to have a modder make a quest that fully requires you to utilize the mechanic to progress is fantastic. So now I'm gonna do something that I actually don't really like doing, but I'm gonna read from the mod page. Travel to the Sea of Ghosts in search of a long lost Greybeard proving ground. Use your wits and your thum to unlock the secrets beneath the ice, all whilst evading a Thalmar raiding party. Only the true Dover King can best all three trial chambers to uncover the ancient legacy of Talos's most powerful relic. It's a pretty enticing bio for the mod to be sure. This is one reason I simply had to try it out and I'm pretty glad I did. I for one have played this game so many times that finding a mission with real differences from the game as opposed to an extension of it feels kind of novel. It's a niche idea that leaves me wondering what other kind of missions could be made that aren't rinse and repeat in a new area and take advantage of lesser used mechanics. If you have thoughts I'd actually love to hear them so put them in the comments section. Anyway back to the mod. To kickstart the new quest you can do a number of things. Head over to High Hrothgar and read the mysterious note search the Thalmor Embassy for a hidden letter, swim north from Broken Ore Goto, or just let it happen organically whilst playing the game. It's cool that it can be started in so many ways, it almost makes it blend into the game, which is made better by the tiny cost of 1.2 megabytes. This could be considered a mod to just leave in your order if you're going to play something like a Dragonborn or a Greybeard playthrough. Slot this mod in with your new quest in the LLO and enjoy! Next up is the Observatory, another new quest mod. A group of necromancers have been investigating an ancient Dwemer compound hidden in the Gerald Mountains. What seems like a normal group of enemies to defeat turns into a long journey through the depths of Nern. 
This mod features brand new enemies, items, a new game area, puzzles, rewards, seven dungeons and unique clutter. Enough to pique the interest of even the most discerning of modders. To start the adventure, you must travel to the surroundings of the Glamoral Coven, where you will find access to the heart of the Gerald Mountains. Whilst playing this mod, I found secret areas, amazing puzzles to challenge your mind, and fun combat to challenge your skills. There really is a little of something for most types of players with this add-on. Your experience can of course differ depending on what mods you're using alongside this one, as textures, animations, lighting, sounds, AI, basically a lot of mods that you're using can overwrite. This is because a lot of vanilla assets are used, which is great because it keeps the cost of this file down to 58.7 megabytes. It also lets you overwrite how everything looks, moves and acts to help you with some consistency across the game. I think this mod is going to suit anyone who likes longer quests. Some of the areas you enter are quite large and have some concepts not used in the game at base, so you have to pay attention to everything you're doing and seeing. You are often rewarded for paying attention to small details and finding an item that will help you through the dungeon. There are some guides that you could follow online, just in case you get stuck or if you think you may have missed something. I know this for reasons, and that is all we'll say on it. To get this mod working, I suggest putting it in with your other quest mods and letting it do its thing. Moving on we have Vitrium, animated crafting on the go. This mod has the potential to be one of the best mods ever created for an actual game changing mechanic. Vitrium adds in a whole new gameplay mechanic that lets you make decisions that would help you in combat before entering, but I'm getting ahead of myself. To start this mod, head to a forge and craft a backpack under the list category. This backpack when selected from your inventory will play an animation of you entering it, akin to The Last of Us or the mod QWM for Fallout 4 on PC. This backpack is going to act as a menu that lets you use some new crafting on the go mechanics that are more than just pulling a forge out of your pocket. That's basic, this mod doesn't care about that. Rather, it adds in a new mechanic entirely to Skyrim that will allow you to sharpen your weapons, granting them extra damage for multiple hits. You can also reinforce your shield so it can take more damage for a few blocks. This is basically preparations for battle and something that is semi-available in the base game, but not in any way of note. And the mod isn't even done yet. You can temper your items, cook on the fly, craft soul gems, scrolls, and after acquiring the spectral pack horn, players can use the horn to summon the spectral pack at pointed locations for a whole hour. But I'm still not done yet. All of these actions are animated with unique player animations, which naturally is going to bump that immersion up somewhat. And moreover, the author isn't done either. Currently, they're on the hunt for some perms to allow for things like oils to be added into the mix. A move like that would really elevate the gameplay loop from something very basic and blah to a far more modern experience. And coupled with other mods we already have available could potentially be used to create the most up-to-date, mechanically excellent version of Skyrim. But there is a downside and for me it's a really big one. Currently, dodge mods aren't working with this. This means you have to make some pretty tough choices, especially when most of the best animation bundles come with UDM boiled in. I keep the faith. Eventually this mod is going to come with support for those kind of mods, so it's 100% one to watch and absolutely worth giving a try even as it is today. This is one of the best mods in quite some time and when those future updates come in, might be one of the best of all time. Even at 46.6 megabytes, which is a fair amount to fork out for animations or mechanics, but there are some external assets being used to make everything look as good as possible. Final thought on this mod is placement, and simply put, this has to go down low, like really low. Do not allow anything else that holds animations to be held below it. So normally I would try and take on 5 mods, but this month has been very much about returning the Skyrim modding scene to where it was a few months ago. Xbox kinda had a little blip and lost two fantastic modders work. I am really happy to announce that most of these are coming back up, and in some new and improved ways, so let's just go over a few of these in case you miss them. First up is Anger, Hostility Towards the Opposition. This is a massive animation bundle using mostly the same assets as a movement and combat overhaul JH, right down to the combat animations. However, the big difference comes from Anger using first person animations. They're here people, they're finally here. 
I'm asked about these a lot, so it's definitely worth mentioning. As is a movement and combat overhaul JH, which was also uploaded again, alongside animated armory, every attack different, and the organic faction setup. These are legitimately a few of my favourite mods of all time, so I'm really happy to have them all back. It's been a really great month for the returning mods alone, but I'm also really surprised with the ingenuity of all the new mods. If you want to be kept up to date with all of the latest releases, re-uploads, updates and maybe get some modding help then I advise coming and joining the Discord server. You can find a link to that in the description below. If this video has been helpful I would really appreciate those likes, comments and of course subscriptions. Those and watch time push my work out so much further with YouTube's algorithm. But either way, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.